Okay, we're ready to talk about the thyroid gland. And we want to start by talking about the hormones the thyroid gland makes. Later we'll talk about its location and some other things about the thyroid gland in our companion animals, especially the dog, cat, and horse. Well, there are two hormones we want to focus on in this presentation. Thyroxin, often having the acronym T4, and then triiodothyronine, T3. And it's very interesting to know that T4 is really a pro-hormone that gets changed into T3, which is the more biologically active hormone, much more active than thyroxin. The 4 and the 3, respectively, refer to the number of iodine molecules in the hormone. So there are four iodine molecules in thyroxin and three th uh, iodine molecules in triiodothyronine. Now we want to talk about one other hormone, but we're going to mention it and see it later, and that is calcitonin. Calcitonin, we'll show you where it's made in the thyroid, but we're going to really reserve its discussion for a lesson called calcium homeostasis. So let's look at the gland structure and where it's located at. It's always going to be near the trachea, and here we've got a nice little diagram, uh, I should say, I guess it is a diagram, of the dog showing where the thyroid gland is and there's some interesting contrasts here uh, obviously this image here is an enlarged image of its location in the animal and you can see that the thyroid gland is actually in two parts now I've got a diagram later that might show there's a little bit of tissue that branches across between the two thyroid glands but in Dogs and cats, it's essentially two separate structures on either side of the trachea. And let me get rid of that for a minute and bring over another one diagram to contrast a human thyroid with a feline thyroid. And you can see here on the right side, we'll talk about the cat, again, there looks like there's two separate thyroid glands. There might be some little tissue that branches across, but it's hard to distinguish, especially when you're dissecting an animal. And in the human, there's always this isthmus of tissue here between the two lobes. So this is the person's right lobe. This is the person's left lobe. And uh, that's what it looks like in those two animals. Now here's a nice little schematic uh, comparing four different animals, and I'll walk you through this. Here's the thyroid in the horse. This would be the horse's right thyroid. This would be the left, because we're kind of looking at the front of the neck. And A is the depiction of the horse. Cattle, our diagram B here. C is the pig, and that's kind of interesting that it tends to be more one piece rather than two distinct lobes. And then finally, the dog here is in the D here, and the cat would be very similar. Now, they've actually got this labeled wrong, because if you're looking at the front of the animal, you could actually say this is the right side of the animal, and this is the left side of the animal. So that's a minor point here. And then I want to show what that looks like in a pig to say... You know, it does kind of look like one piece. So here's a diagram, or I should say an actual picture of a dissection of a fetal pig. If you've never done that before, the fetal pig is almost very close to birth. So it's basically fully formed. And you can see in this picture here, the thyroid at least tends to look like one piece, like our other diagram indicated. Now, whenever you talk about the thyroid gland, there's another gland that comes to mind, and we need to point this out. 
and this will be a subject of another lesson, but the parathyroid glands are very close in location to the thyroid gland. So now here in the dog, they are pointing to two separate islands of tissue, and they're called parathyroid glands. And then this is on the left side of the animal. So the part that we can't see on the right side of the animal would also have two additional thyroid glands. So thyroid gland, or parathyroid gland, I should say. I misspoke there. Para, meaning beside. Okay. And then here's another beautiful little drawing that shows the thyroid gland and the parathyroid. And they've even got this labeled here, external parathyroid gland, because if you dissect in this animal, that parathyroid gland could actually be easily taken off the thyroid tissue, whereas the inter internal parathyroid gland is kind of embedded and it would be harder to uh, dissect. Also notice that you know, we're looking at the front of the neck. So again, I say this is the left thyroid, this is the right thyroid. And you can see they're a little different size. And one, the right thyroid gland is a little more cranial, is a little more up on the trachea versus the left thyroid gland. So this would be the dog and cat, for example. Now I wanna do a little histology and start with this picture that uh, that's on the left side of the screen shows the location of the cat thyroid gland so this remember this is we're looking at the front of the neck so this is actually the cat's right thyroid this is its left thyroid t is for the trachea this is the front of the trachea and on the right side the right image is histology Remember, histology is literally the study of tissue. You use a microscope, usually a light microscope, and you can see that in this diagram, there are these like chambers. And number one here is called a resting follicle. All these that have this fluid looking material inside is a follicle. And number two here, they're calling it an active follicle because it's tending to make thyroid hormones, the T4 and T3, and it's using up some of this material inside. Then here's even a better histological section that somebody has labeled. So I want to point this out. This is highly enlarged. And way down here in the corner, you can see they're indicating we're taking a little bit of tissue out of this entire thyroid gland and enlarging it. Of course, there's always blood supply to all the endocrine tissues. And in the center of these follicles, you can call it colloid, which is containing a molecule called thyroglobin, which is necessary for the production of the T3 and T4. And the cells that actually make Synthesized T3 and T4 are these cells that are lining these follicles. Okay, and they're called follicular cells. Follicular cells make T4 and T3. And then we have some cells that are called parafollicular cells. Now these are going to be away from the edge of the colloid in the middle here, like in this diagram. And these put parafollicular cells secrete calcitonin, which is going to be a subject of another lesson.